first things you did as honor in Jewish tradition or any tradition in that day was you give that man something to wash his feet off with, especially if he's respecting the community. So when Mary comes in and washes his feet, I mean, they're talking bad about him. And he's like, no, 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 no. This very act is that act of humility that should have been done. And then redemption happens every single time. And that's the Jesus that the world needs to see. Get out of my way. I possess some dog in me. Trying to keep me from my destiny. Yeah. Gotta move around. Gotta get my feet off the ground. Welcome to Are You Real? Finding the Authentic You, the podcast that focuses on Christians that are active in everyday life. Join in as we speak to everyone from successful business owners to educators to athletes about their faith and how it helps them reach out and revolutionize those around them to do the same. And now get ready to roar with your host, the voice of manifestation, John Fuller. Nation, John here, and I am fired up, dude, for today's rockin' guest, Todrick Murray! Todrick, yeah, you fired up and ready to go, brother? You ready Let's to roar? Hit. I'm ready. Let's roar. All right, so check this out. Todrick Murray is passionate, electrifying entertainer who's known for his ability to vocally captivate his audience and take them to a sonic experience that leaves them speechless. His attribute alone with his musicianship on guitar and piano, smooth dance moves, anti delivery, and experience driven <laughs> lyric content reveal a unique, relatable message in the atmosphere specific to the brand that has become Todrick Murray, the artist. And check this out he has worked with, are you ready? Stevie Wonder, Rihanna. Justin Timberlake, Jennifer Hudson, Jennifer Lopez, Maroon oh. 5, Jonathan Tholen, which I don't know that one, and Jesus Culture. He is a writer, a producer, and a musician. Oh my gosh, Todrick, did I miss anything, my friend? <laughs> I'm sitting here trying to figure out if you're talking about me. <laughs> Dude, I mean, that is a bio, my friend. Hey, now I did pull this up on the internet, so... I mean, yeah. I'm just saying, I don't know, but brother, you got quite a list of stuff you've done, dude. So, hey, tell us more about kind of what you're doing, your passion, and how you relate and tie that into <clears throat> Jesus, my friend. I'm going to be honest with you. Passion-wise, my passion is for, there's this term that says you've been 86, so basically it means like you've been kicked to the curb and you're irrelevant, and my passion for those people and for those who, you know, most would give up hope for or say, you know, there's no way they can make it to enlightened state. And I'm telling you, that's what drives me to do everything I do. And there's a huge message, of course, of empowerment when you start talking about Christ. And in his word, he says, you know, he didn't call the righteous to repentance, but the sinners, you know, and that's all of us. And it just so happens that I'm fortunate enough to go into you know, the secular world and be a light in what is deemed the dark world. And yeah, man, that's what I'm most passionate about, you know. I love it, man. I'm excited for you. So tell me a little bit about your journey, because to be honest, dude, those are some huge names that's a big industry. Tell me a little bit how you got started and where you're at right now. Well, my parents are pastors, and so I started with just being a worship leader at their church and when I got to college, I was an uh, assistant music director at that church. And long story short, I ended up going on tour and I would write all kinds of songs. And I started going through a lot of things. And I noticed that what I was going through were the same as others. And it just so happened that my tool was music. So I started putting my experiences into music and making it attractive and going on tour one summer so back up real quick. Would you say you go okay. on tour? How'd you even get found to go on tour? I'm interested. Dude, like I started a band. It was called Daybreak when I was in college. Yeah. And we were just a Christian band, you know, a lot of college students coming together. And 
we started touring with, well, ourselves going to different like high school events, college events, and then churches heard about us and it started building up momentum. And long story short, some friends of mine, they're consumed by fire band they're playing on air one and all that good stuff it's it, they're doing really well i'm proud of them but consumed by fire was one of the first people that i toured on as a solo artist toured with as a solo artist and i mean it's really just been a word of mouth type of situation and you know god opening doors you know right. as far as is concerned so okay so you go on tour and so i go on tour and i start to mix in my experience songs with the Christian song and worship songs that I love to write also. And I ended up on the last tour I ever did in Illinois. We ran into the president of a subsidiary of Universal Music Group. And he was like, dude, I, I like that one song that you did. And he happens to be a believer also hitting into the secular industry. And he's like, I like that song that you were doing. Do you have any more? And I just finished a project and so he was like, how do you feel about Los Angeles? I was like, well, I've never been to Los Angeles, so I can't answer that question. They end up moving me to Los Angeles five months later, and then the roller coaster started from there. Because <laughs> it's definitely been a roller coaster in this industry since I started. So that was the end of 2010 okay. when I went to. Okay, so you talk about a roller coaster. So I'm assuming that you get signed on, you get fly out there. I would say that's high. I mean, that's you got to be pretty excited. I mean, that's big time. Yes. So yes. things are going good, I'm assuming. You're excited. Did you start hitting some low points? Well, I was with them for about a year, and they ended up shelving my project and because I was a writer, I didn't start off producing. I started off writing and being an artist. And the words to me were, you're more valuable to us as a writer than an artist because they had other people on the roster that, you know, they'd already put money toward and it was working for them. So they shelved my project and ended up giving my songs or selling my songs to other artists. And when we kind of deferred in our opinions, and so when we did that, it was like, it's our way or the highway. <laughs> you know? yeah. And there are certain levels of, especially in my early career, there are certain things I didn't want to do. And they dropped me from the label. Like I was in a boardroom meeting with several of the heads and they're like, you're done. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and they weren't very nice about it either. And so that's when, you know, I had to start hustling because right. I'm in a huge city. I lose my house. I was dating a girl who is an actor to this day. And since I wasn't a man anymore, you know, she left. So that's a broken heart. Man, on top. so you lost your music. <laughs> you lost your woman. It it's sounds like more song, like a country, man. dude. I was just going to say that. <laughs> you better get out your guitar yeah. and start playing. Hey, if you play it backwards, you get it all back. Yeah, I know it. Exactly. Exactly. But yeah, I lost. I lost everything. I was sleeping in my car for two and a half years and... Man, it was something. So I'm just uh, curious, though. If, I mean, if people are using your songs, you still get royalties off those, do you not? Well, with the way the split happened, they knew they put me in a desperate situation. Let's put it that way. They knew they put me in a desperate situation. So what they ended up doing is paying me up front for things, and I needed the money. So I was like, yeah, yeah I'll take it. But the deal was zero royalties for that work, and... I wasn't allowed to have my name on it either. So it was like when they dropped me, like it was almost like being blacklisted and everything I'd worked on, my reputation that I'd built there for being a good writer, all gone. <laughs> so it was literally like starting all over and being a stranger in a city of, you know, nine million plus people. So it's wow. crazy. OK, so God is good. Yeah, I'm going to say you're at the bottom at that point. Give me some light at the uh, tunnel, man. So uh, have you dug out of this or you're making some headway in this area? Yeah, man. About two and a half years later, I met who was now one of my closest friends, man, because, you know, I wanted to be so numb. So I would drink myself to sleep, right. <laughs> you know, and well, then... that's depressing, dude. I mean, you've lost everything, dude. I'd be drinking some NyQuil to sleep, too, my friend. Dude, man. <laughs> 
Unfortunately, you know, it was a little harder than NyQuil. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. It was that stuff that, you know, usually knocks people out. Man, I would drink myself to sleep, man, and then I'd do cocaine, do coke to get myself back up the next morning so that I could at least hustle to, you know, make a list a living. But, dude, I kind of coasted through those two and a half years not really feeling anything. It was just... I didn't know where God was, all that stuff. I just felt like everybody abandoned me, (laughs) you know, especially since those people were supposed to be God fearing folk. But as far as light at the end of the tunnel, man. Hold on real quick, Todrick, I want to back up. So, I mean, I've been there. A lot of people have. So you're going through a hard time. Obviously, you're doing drugs, you're drinking. Yeah. When did you have like kind of that moment where you're like, all right, dude, this just ain't working. I mean, did you have like a Holy Ghost type experience? Or Bro. maybe not. I mean, what happened? Because something had to snap you out of that at that point. Dude, it was one of the... Now, mind you, Santa Monica does not get cold. L.A. doesn't really get cold. But it was one of the coldest... This sounds like a storybook beginning. It was one of the coldest... <laughs> Cinderella, <things sorry>. <laughs> In like 15 years. And I was sleeping in my car, three pairs of pants three shirts, two jackets, three, pa- like I'm bundled up with the blanket on top of me. And I'm in this neighborhood in Santa Monica. And all of a sudden I hear gunshots, you know, and when I hear the gunshots, clearly I'm like, I have no way to really protect myself. And so I slink down in my seat and cover myself up and about 30 minutes pass and someone called the cops and the cops come next to my car and they stop. And, you know, my windows are fogged because it's warm in the car and (laughs) cold outside. So he thought he had to have thought two things. Either I'm doing something with some lady that I'm not supposed to be doing in the street (laughs) or I'm the dude who was shooting. Yeah. You know, and so at that moment, you know, it had been a while since I really just asked God for help. But I was like, God, like, look, please make me invisible to this guy because if he opens the door and he sees me in here, I'm probably going to get in trouble and I'm going to be a suspect in a shooting. And it, it, the shooting ends up coming on the news and it was some people got killed or whatever. But God covers me and the cop ends up, he had his brights shining into my window and he ends up driving off and never messing with me or saying anything. And after he drives off, I break down crying because in that moment, you know, one thing remains starts playing in my head that your love never fails and never gives up never runs out on me starts playing right yeah and i start falling because i feel like god is saying listen i don't care how dark it is i don't care how far you feel you've gone from me being able to find you you know i will always see you i will always be there and in those moments that you feel like hope is gone Remember that my love for you is never going anywhere. (laughs) Like, I don't know. It's the trick of the enemy to make you think that God would just abandon you. And that's how I felt. And yeah, man, that was when I woke up. I called my parents crying and bawling and all that. And I'm like, guys, like, you know, God just spoke to me and told me that his love never fails for me. And uh, Yeah, man, it was, of course, it didn't, everything for me didn't change overnight, but it definitely was the turning point in being in that bad, dark spot. So, so give me a 30,000 foot view of like the last couple of years of what happens. Cause I mean, you go from signing a record deal, you're writing music, working with artists, things are looking great. And then all of a sudden you're sleeping in your car, doing drugs. You've had this aha moment. What's going on like the last couple of years, 30,000 foot view? What has God done to speed up that process to restore what you lost? Well, and this goes back to the friend. God sends me a friend. Dude, this is so crazy. God sends me a Todrick sends Todrick a friend. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Hey, God sends me a friend, man. And he is my brother. He's a close friend I have. We both live in L.A. We've never met, right? He grew up in Amarillo. His entire family knows me, and we never meet until this point. He's an actor and screenwriter, and he tells me 
you know, one of the things he said to me was to release myself from everything that has happened and all the expectations you have on your life and just let God flow with you. And so, yeah, man, we have a lot of talks and I have a therapeutic friend or a therapist friend who helps me through things. And I put a lot of things in God's hands and it just, you know, he took control. And then I started getting random you know, a friend of mine who was at the label gives me one opportunity right on this writing crew who's working on these three songs for Jennifer Hudson. And he's like, we need a writer. Can you be over here in 30 minutes? We need the song done, the first song done. So on the 405, I'm driving across town <laughs> and I'm writing in my head like, golly, I don't know what to write. And I did not have anything at all. And I'm panicking. Long story short, I write a song called Stained Glass, and she turned it into something else. I don't remember what the name of the song is now, but Stained Glass, and it was about how I was seeing myself versus how God sees me, but I put it in like a little secular spin, and she loved it. And that was like the first song that I sold, and from there it was just opportunity after opportunity, and now I'm here producing my own record and working with Universal UK and Sony Africa and you know guys just sending all these opportunities so yeah. it's crazy but I'm thankful he's so cool like that he is dude tell you that, what yeah just think about it. you got to meet me my friend that's exactly what I'm saying bro come if on all my, if all of my struggles was just to meet you man then dude I'd do it all over again oh dude <laughs> you're swelling my head right now I got a pen too if you need a pen you know I, I, <laughs> Let some of that air out. <laughs> yeah, man. I appreciate yeah. that. All right, so Todrick, what do you feel like your biggest strength is in the gift? So your gifting's music, your writing music. What do you feel like your strength is? I think writing is definitely, well, I know that writing is my greatest strength. And the reason I know I feel that way is because I feel like God uses me prophetically through what I write. A lot of times I'll start a song and he'll give me a concept or, or someone will come to me with a concept and then, you know, I'll pray on it. <laughs> I might get frustrated, but when the frustration goes away, like God just opens this orifice and the song, I'll sing the song through once like I wrote it or like I heard it before. But it'll be the first time I've said any of the words, you know, and it always turns out that those words are exactly what that person needed and that I'm writing for for myself. So I'm writing, man. That's the strength, bro. Woo, that's powerful. Hey, Todrick, I want to share this with you. I feel like this is a good moment. So I prayed for you at the beginning of the show, and this goes along with your gifts, your strength. So I think it's really interesting. You talk about prophetically doing music in people's lives. Okay, so I want to read this to you. You cool with that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. so... What I heard for you, Todrick, it says, a revival to music is what you're going to do, that you are called and created to raise a standard and a bar in music. You are authentic and raw, and you are what this generation needs. I'm bringing you to the front of the pack to be a light, to bring hope to the lost in the entertainment industry. You will wow. be a counselor and a pastor to many in this arena. When people get lost and need help, it'll be your number that others will hand out. Wow. But I think that's really interesting. You talk about music, man. I mean, prophetically, think about that, what people need in their lives. So, you know, that's a Holy Spirit type thing that you're singing prophetically into people's lives and bringing almost like a musically heaven to earth wow. into people's lives. Man, that's big time, man. I appreciate that word. I had a mentor tell me, that music is the only phenomenon on the planet that invades people's privacy without their permission. Oh, yes. And so, man, like you giving me that word, you know, just more, it makes me even more so want to respect the responsibility of the opportunities and the gifts that God's given me. Because if I don't do anything else or I never become super, super uber famous, <laughs> you know, just the fact of that change in people's lives and being able to be in the same room as certain individuals to make a difference. That's all I want, man. At the end of the day, that's all I want. So I well, appreciate it. I think you got the personality for it, man. I think you're going to do great things. But I want to ask you, 
Todrick, what do you feel like a weakness is for you? Because a lot of people they are going to listen to this podcast and say, man, he's done great things. You're working with big artists. You're doing all this. And sometimes we look at people as superstars and you don't come off that way, which just I love your heart and your humbleness. But there's weaknesses that we all struggle with. What is something you'd be willing to share with us and then how you rely on the Lord to work through that? I have two very big ones. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> one, I think the biggest one for me is control. It's because I have a bad habit of, or it's very easy for me to want to just to control everything. Like if it's not how I like it, or if it's not going my way, I'm one who takes the reins, you know, even on accident sometimes from God. And I'm like, no, get out the way. And that's a pride issue. That's a pride thing, man. And in our industry, you know, it's easy to become self-indulged. I mean, the greatest musician of all time outside of God the Father himself was Satan. And pride was the thing that made him fall, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And my form of pride a lot of times is control, man. And, and and I really have to, a lot of times I go on fast specifically just so that I can like kill Todrick and shut his mouth up so that I can get back in my word and, you know, lean on God and read scriptures like, Lean not onto your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge God and he'll direct your path. Because at the end of the day, man, I'll mess it up. If yeah. I'm doing it, I will mess it up. And my other bad weakness is I fear a lot because, you know, in this industry, there's a lot of unpredictability. Right. And so courage is something that I always have to remind myself to have every single day. In fact, I have a bracelet on my hand right now and I wear it every day and it says courage. And it's just reminiscent of the scripture, Joshua 1, 9, that says, haven't I commanded you? Yeah, haven't I commanded courage. you? Yeah, have courage, you know, be strong and courageous because God the Father will lead you and be with you every step of the way. And so those are mine, man. And they're hard, like they're real talk struggles. They might not sound that bad to anybody else. But for me, like I've messed up a lot trying to control everything and just not really being that very brave. <laughs> so... Well, I see you as a lion, my friend. So I think uh, as you press forward and just allow God to continue to speak through you and just live out what God has for you, that courage is going to rise up, the, like that God courage in you, and uh, you'll be able to lay that down. So I'm excited for you. Yeah, man, I appreciate you. Okay, so Todrick, what is the biggest thing right now God's stirring inside of you? What are you like from a 1 to 10, dude? You are a 10 excited about going after in your life. I feel like we are in a, and it's, man, it's been confirmed with a lot of my friends, but I feel like we're in a time of unity and unifying different souls together. I mean, that are in like-minded arenas and like-minded atmospheres and areas of thought. And I feel like God is really showing what the sound of heaven is in any arena, really tapping into how did the, the saints of old and how did the people of old, our ancestors sing, and how are they still singing with us today? And coming together with different nationalities and different people who have other strengths that you don't have to create something that, that is tr really, really heavenly and that penetrates no matter what arena you're in. And... Um, I don't know. I just feel like God is, is really in the business of going behind enemy lines and just captivating the masses. And that's that's what I feel, man. That's powerful. So how do you feel like in your industry, how are you able to share the gospel? Because I think, you know, a lot of people, including myself, you just get sick of people jumping out and they just want to hit you over the head with the Bible, say you need to repent. You need to know Jesus. And I get it. And I know their heart and I appreciate it. But there's an aspect to it that just makes me nauseated. Yeah, man. Um, so how do you do that? Because there's got to be a way. People need a friend. They don't need a Bible thumper. They need a friend. How do you approach that and able to share what God's done in your life with in that industry you're in? First of all, I start getting passionate when we talk about hitting people upside the head. And this is why. This is why. And everyone who's listening, I hope you hear me for like truth value. Bible talks about a Jesus who absolutely does not do that. Jesus, not one time, when you think about the people that God witnessed to, that Jesus witnessed to, he didn't go in there browbeaten. He was the one who said, let he who has no sin cast the first stone. He was the one who 
asked the hostess, yo, you didn't give me nothing to wash my feet. They used to walk around barefooted and with sandals on. And one of the first things you did as honor in Jewish tradition or any tradition in that day was you give that man something to wash his feet off with, especially if he's respected in the community. So when Mary comes in and washes his feet. I mean, they're talking bad about him. And he's like, no, 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 no. This very act is that act of humility that should have been done. And then redemption happens every single time. And that's the Jesus that the world needs to see. Yeah. Just like you said, they need a friend. They need to see the love of Christ. And that means that, okay, we both sing in this arena. We both act in this arena. But when we're not on screen, when we're not on stage, when I'm not Todrick Murray and I'm just Todrick Hunt, you know, I'm not that guy who everybody knows. I can trust you to the point to where we can talk about the, the real issues that are going on. And that's where we have the opportunities. That's where I've had the opportunities to talk to really close friends of mine who are in the industry and be like, yo, like, this is what my Bible says this is what I believe, man. And I'm not thumping you, but I'm just saying, like, it worked for me. And I'm here for you if you just want to talk. And that's sometimes the influences can just be the positive influences can be as good as let me give you a hug. Let's go get some ice cream. Let's hang out. You know, time. Let's do you, it. You know, that's it. That's all. Showing people that they're loved and having a good time with them. That's what Jesus would do. Not all this other nonsense. <laughs> Amen to that, my friend. So, Todrick, what's a book that you've read recently that's kind of impacted your life that you'd share with our listeners? Bro, Chase the Lion. Who wrote that? Chase the Lion. Oh, man, I got to look it up, bro. I can't think of it. But Chase the Lion, bro. So good. Okay, tell me a little bit about it. Chase the Lion, in essence, it talks about how we have our giants, we have our struggles, we have our big things that, that, are, that can intimidate us. But instead of running away from that intimidation, realize who you are and attack it. And when you attack it with all authority, you will find that you can conquer that lion or that struggle or that mountain that you're trying to jump over. And it's, it's so inspirational and it's, uses, it's actually a Christian author. And he does such a great job in it. It's so my mantra. It's like, don't run from it. Face it. Let's knock it out. Let's do it. So I just pulled it up on my phone. He's a New York Times bestseller. His name is Mark yes. Batterson. Yes. Uh, and uh, going after your dreams, it sounds like. So it looks good, man. Yeah, you're welcome, Mark, for this plug. You're welcome. You're welcome, Mark. <laughs> that will be $1, please. Exactly. You'll be getting yeah. my invoice for $1. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Okay. So... Todrick, I ask everybody this question, and the movie Big with Tom Hanks, do you remember that when we were kids? Yes. Okay, so you get to go back and talk to the younger you, okay? Yeah. And you get to give yourself advice. You can't change anything about your future, so you can just give yourself advice. You're not going to, you can't change anything, anything like that. What advice would you tell yourself to encourage yourself? Woo! Come on. Well... One thing I would say to me is, don't be so hard on yourself. <laughs> you know, don't don't be so hard on yourself. You know, to be honest, the other thing would just be to live. You know, don't be hard on yourself and live because I did attempt suicide. It didn't work. God said, I'm gonna give you life, and you don't want it. So don't even think about it. And life more abundantly, my friend. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, that's what I would say. And. Because, you know, those experiences have defined me to this day. So, yeah. Okay. I like it. Don't be hard on yourself. All right. So, Todrick, if I want some music produced, dude, I want you to come sing for me. I just want to know Todrick Murray. How do I find you, my friend? Come on now. Well, I have a... So, my website's under construction, but it won't be for long. And it'll be Todrick Murray, or it is ToddrickMurray.com. But I'm on Instagram at Todrick Murray. I'm on Twitter at TM Universe. And I'm on Facebook at Todrick Murray, everything. And then my email is Todrick Murray at gmail.com. I'm the type of person who always responds or tries my best to respond. I might not respond all like right away, but, but you're yeah, man, it. absolutely. I'll talk to you. Let's talk. I love it. Well, I'm excited, too. So you're producing. I want to do a quick plug for Matt Dietz, who introduced us, yeah. which I greatly appreciate. You're working on his stuff right now, his album. I'm excited about that. You want to give me just a little bit into what's going into Matt's, what you guys are doing right now? 
Well, Matt's record is kind of what we talked about earlier about the sound of heaven. The name of it is the sound of heaven, and the record will breach the gap between generations. Yeah, um, and it'll tell a, a rite of passage story from yesteryear to today to what we think the future looks like. And so, and that's from a sonic standpoint, which you hear, and from a lyrical standpoint. And the guy's voice is just ridiculous. I yeah, mean, Matt does a great like, job, man. It, so big you know like i sing like i have a a single right now out on itunes called soar and i sing you know i love to sing but this dude's voice is just big so it's crazy hey and i'm gonna be taking your new song soar and we're gonna be playing it regularly on our show because that song has got me so pumped up man i got two twelves bumping in my truck dude i plugged i dude i was rocking your song the other day i guarantee my neighbors could feel me from like down the street that's hilarious. I appreciate the love, man. That's funny. So I absolutely love that. So anyways, Todrick, hold on just a second. Roar okay. Nation, I hope you guys had fun with Todrick, man. Check out his music. Check out his stuff. Go on to iTunes. We'll have a leak. Uh, a leak. There's no leaking here. Uh, just a link. And uh, anyways, it's on iTunes. It's uh, Soar, Todrick Murray. Check out his website. If you're looking to get an album produced, a record, check him out. He's worked with big people. He's doing great things. Send him an email. Tell him that you found us on here. So anyways, guys, please rate and review us. Get on iTunes. We are number two in the nation in iTunes right now. Man, I'm excited about that. Guys, remember, man, it's all about be real, be authentic, and be you. God bless. That's all for this episode of Are You Real? Finding the Authentic You. Be sure to go to areyoureal.org for your free questionnaire to identify your gifts and talents and how you can use them to help people become leaders and catapult them into their destiny to help others become the leaders of tomorrow. We appreciate you spending your time with us and look forward to helping you reach out and revolutionize next time on Are You Real? Finding the Authentic You.